All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to talk to you about a fact that is guaranteed to surprise you. And you have to understand, if I'm excited about number theory, it means it's a pretty cool fact. Okay, so let's start with something that you probably thought of at some point in your lives. Namely, if we pick two numbers at random, let's say two and five, what are the chances that they have no factors in common? For instance, here, 2 and 5 have no factors in common, but let's say 9 and 15, they have a factor in 3 in common. And let's see how we can approach this. Well, first of all, what are the chances that the number is even? So what are the chances that the number is divisible by 2? Well, 1 half, because 1 half of numbers are even. I know black pen, red pen doesn't agree with it, but I think probabilistically this is true. And similarly, what are the chances that a number is divisible by 3? Well, 1 out of 3 numbers is a multiple of 3. So 1 third. And more generally, what are the chances that a number is divisible by a prime number p? Well, it's 1 over p. And now look, if we now pick two uh, positive integers at random, well, it is a pretty independent choice. So the chances that both of them have a factor of p in common is just 1 over p, so for the first number, times 1 over p for the second number, which no, it's not 1 over pi m, but it's 1 over p squared. In particular, the chances of m and n not having factor of p in common is 1 minus p squared. So now the question is, what are the chances that m and n have no factors in common? What does it mean? It means they don't have 2 in common, so 1 minus 1 over 2 squared. They don't have 3 in common, so times 1 minus 1 over 3 squared. They don't have 5 in common, 1 minus 1 over 5 squared, etc., etc. So this is the probability that they have no factors in common. And of course, now the goal is to write this in closed form, kind of have an explicit formula for this. And for this, let's try to cover a problem that seems to have nothing to do with this. And surprisingly, we'll see that they're related. So part two, consider the following weird sum. 1 plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 3 squared plus 1 over 4 squared, dot, dot, dot. And I have done a separate video on this, and it turns out this sum is pi squared over 6. So, so using what's called Parseval's sum. And this, by the way, if you're curious, that's what's called zeta of 2, so the sum of reciprocals of squares. And let's apply the following clever calculation. What if we take zeta of 2 and we divide it by 2 squared? So let's do 1 over 2 squared, zeta of 2. Then it turns out what we get, all the denominators become even. So it's 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 4 squared plus 1 over 6 squared plus dot dot dot. And now let's take the original sum and subtract it with this. So let's try to do 1 minus 1 over 2 squared, zeta 2. Then it turns out, if you subtract this from this, all, all the even terms disappear. And what we're left with is simply, also this, and what we're left with is simply 1 plus 1 over 3 squared plus 1 over 5 squared, so all the odd terms. 7 squared, etc., etc. And it turns out, if you do the same spiel, but with 1 minus 1 over 3 squared, then all the multiples of 3 will disappear. So in other words, zeta 2 times 1 minus 1 over 2 squared times 1 minus 1 over 3 squared, what this ends up being is simply, let's say, 1 plus 1 over 5 squared plus 1 over 7 squared 
plus 1 over 11 squared. So not quite all the prime numbers, but you can have 1 over 35 squared, for instance, etc., etc. And maybe now you notice the pattern. Here we eliminated all the multiples of 2. Here we eliminated all the multiples of 3. And it turns out, if you continue that process for every single prime number, so zeta 2 times 1 minus 1 over 2 squared times 1 minus 1 over 3 squared times 1 minus 1 over 5 squared, etc., etc., then everything disappears. So bang, 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 except for this one. And you might say, okay, this is a random calculation. What does it have to do with the previous problem? Oh, this is precisely the probability that we wanted. So in fact, now we actually have a closed form solution for our probability, namely, the, again, the chances of two integers being co-prime, which is 1 minus 1 over 2 squared, 1 minus 1 over 3 squared, 1 minus 1 over 5 squared, etc., etc., over all the prime numbers. It's 1 over zeta 2, but remember zeta 2 was pi squared over 6, and this is 6 over pi squared. Did anyone guess that? Probably not. Again, this is very, very neat. Again, it's not obvious that co-prime has to do with 6 over pi squared. But wait, we are not done, because it turns out there's an amazing geometric application of this, which I'll cover now. Now, let's try to cover another problem that seems to have nothing to do with co-prime. Namely, consider the integer lattice like that, so like this, so just the lattice of positive integers. Da, da, da. And by the way, so I got inspired by, from this by a tweet by Juliet Bruce, who talked about shadows and lattices, and I was like, oh, I should probably do that. So suppose you have the following lattice, and let's say this is the origin. 0, 0, and let's consider the following fun game. Namely, let's pick a random point and consider the ray going from the origin to that point. So for instance, this is 1, 2, 3, so 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, so this is the point 1, comma 4, but then notice here there's nothing blocking this ray, so this ray goes directly from this point to this point, but for instance, if we pick the point, uh, let's say uh, 0, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, like let's say this point, 2, comma 4, then oh no, this middle point here is blocking the ray, so think like a kind of a shadow. But if we pick, let's say, the point 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, let's say here, 3, comma 5, then it turns out there's also nothing blocking that point. So, and if you have this ray, maybe it goes kind of like that. And notice it goes directly from 0, 0 to uh, 3, 5. And here's an interesting question, namely, um, what is the probability that uh, a ray goes directly from a point to another? So among any of those lattice points, what is the probability that there is no shadow? There, or in other words, there is no blockage. And it turns out, surprisingly, it has to do with numbers being co-prime. Because here, for instance, 3, 5, 3 and 5 have no factors in common. So there is no blocking, but if you pick, let's say, a 2, 4, then precisely the point 1, 2 is blocking that ray. So in other words, the probability of having no shadow whatsoever is precisely 6 over pi squared. Who would have thought that? And finally, I mean, uh, this seems like a fun game, but this is also very useful apparently in, um, in cryptography and the other one is, I think, machine learning, uh, machine design. So apparently for designing machines, this is useful. And last but not least, I do want to mention, because this number, remember, is 1 over zeta 2, 
There's also some application, I forgot exactly which one, but if you have, let's say, three points, and maybe there's no shadow or something, then the probability would be one over zeta three, and in general, for a constellation of k points, the probability would be one over zeta k. I mean, how cool is that? All right, I hope you like this, and I hope I promised my delivery, okay? <laughs> if you like this and you wanna see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.